What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. Today, we are going to be playing the last five games of our Foot Champs run. Um, the, the, I don't know if... if uh, EA, 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 I don't know. I've got five games left. I've got 20 wins. We need to go three and two to get into Elite. I don't know if I want to go to Elite. I don't care if we go to Elite. Or at least I didn't because, like, you know, the team of the week is slash was shaping up to be pretty poor. However, currently on the Monday games, Werner and Sané have both scored for Germany. Not that I need more attackers or anything like that, but we could be seeing Salah. Uh, some are saying that Neymar might get in for his penalty. Harry Kane, potentially Jesse Lingard. Um, just lots of good attackers. I don't need attackers, but you know, if I could pack them in an inform pack and sell them, we'd get a lot of coins that would be super helpful. So generally speaking, they haven't included Monday games. Uh, otherwise, the whole Arsenal squad would have got a team of the week a few weeks back. Um, so I don't know if these games are going to count. And so I, I, I just, I'm, I'm whatever at the moment. However, what we're going to start with today is me completing um, not Chicharito yet. I do kind of want this card because I actually think this is an all right card. His dribbling and pace are great. His positioning and finishing are great. His jumping and heading are so good that for crosses and corners, he is going to be a menace. His stamina is okay. His composure and reactions are fantastic. Okay, he can't pass, but um, I actually, I would love to test out this card. The problem with this card is right now at the time of making this video is that he's far too expensive. Um, he is coming in at currently 125,000 coins on PlayStation. Now, you do get a Mega Pack and a Prime Gold Players Pack back for that. So, you get, what is that, 80,000 coins worth of packs. Plus, this Chicharito for about 125k. You know, could make a good case for, for that. I've seen some people pack some icons out of the packs, get good informs and stuff like that. So, we can make a case for that. But And, and it's not like I don't have the coins. I have plenty of coins. I'm, I'm coin rich right now. We've got 400, 500,000 coins. I've got about four to 500,000 coins of easily accessible sellables. And then probably another three to 500,000 coins of grinding, grindy uh, sellables. Like, uh, you know, all the gold commons and stuff like that. So, I could easily get myself up to 1.5 million coins if needs be. But what we're going to do today, and again with Jade and Sand, I'm going to wait on this one. I want to complete this because I think the packs are good. And I'll tell you why I think the packs are good. First and foremost, every pack is only players. So the premium gold players pack gives you three rares and nine commons. Uh, the small rares gives you six rares. So right now you're at nine rares and nine commons. And the player of the month set gives you a jumbo premium gold players pack, which is six more rares, taking you to a total of 15 rare players. And... Uh, 18 common cards. So 27 commons and 15 rares for the rewards. Um, the problem, once again, is that the Sancho SBC is currently about 100,000 coins because German and Bundesliga informs have gone through the roof. I've basically completed this unless I've got some holes. Yeah, so on this one, we've got all the players available. All we would have to do is put in a German inform at the striker position and then that would be done um for Borussia Dortmund we have this one completely finished already we get a small rare gold players pack for that and in fact I'm going to turn this one in now I think I know I've got some Mexicans in here but these are the Mexicans that aren't really worth anything due to um due to uh due to the fact that for Chicharito you need some some of the higher rated better Mexicans and then we also have the Bundesliga set the again I just need one Bundesliga team of the week card everything else is done so I could complete this for just the price it would cost me to purchase the inform and the Bundesliga inform but I'm going to wait until the new team of the week comes out and see if we can get something you know get it basically for a little bit cheaper or until the hype around the Sancho SBC goes so we can get the whole thing for cheaper I don't think it's the greatest player we talked about it before his pace and dribbling are okay but his reactions and composure are terrible his stammer is all right and then generally speaking his shooting is just quite bad and so, and so is his passing so even though he might get a good upgrade in the winter upgrades this isn't a, this is a card that i'm doing to hopefully pack something good out of the packs not because i think the card's very good and then what we're actually going to do for today's video is the swedish player of the year now this is there for 13 days or 14 days on the face of it, it looks great. 85 pace, 84 dribbling, 83 shooting, 77 physical, 71 passing. Very nice indeed. However, sadly, in-game, although this is a good card, really well-rounded shooting, really well-rounded pace, 
Uh, his agility and balance are nice. His composure is very, very nice. He's got a little low on reactions. Not the end of the world. The biggest problem for me with this card is he's got 67 stamina. EA were this close to making a sick SVC. Just give him like 75 stamina or 78 or 80 stamina. And then he, this turns into being a card where you're like, holy crap, this is amazing. Um, but with 67 stamina, I'm a bit like, meh. However, with the four-star weak foot, four-star skill moves... Uh, with a good pace and, and good dribbling and stuff. What we're going to do today is we are going to complete him. I've used uh, a lot of untradeables in this team. So it's one Sweden, one Brazil, four rares, 82 rated, 80 chemistry. Uh, for me, Rui Patricio, untradeable. Uh, Jansen is our Swedish player. Bruno Fernandes, untradeable. Uh, Lovren from the Premier League there. Davies is untradeable. Kovacic is untradeable. Uh, Jean Moutinho goes in. Henderson goes in. Lucas goes in, Arnautovic goes in, and Shakiri goes in. So some tradables, some untradables. And we are going to pop this guy into our starting 11 for our final five games to, just to see. You know, just to see. So we are getting, let's do the T-pose because he's a walkout. Let's go. We get a walkout. Come on, EA. GG's. We get the left wing Brazilian one day. This will be Ronaldinho, but not today. Is Paulinho coming out in that fire kit. Let's go. Don't dance, don't dance, dude. Um, so, yeah, we're going to use him in our final five games. Just to, you know, I'm going to have to sub him off probably at like half time, 60th minute at the absolute best of it. Um, I've put Vendel in at left back as well. I could use, uh, I could use players on uh, eight chemistry, but I've already, I'm already sacrificing Aubameyang's chemistry for this. I've got Mbappe and Lala in there as well so that we don't have Bale on eight chemistry either. Um, but yeah, basically, we've got Paulinho in there. Uh, I think I want to give him... I think I want to give him the sniper chemistry style. Let me just have a look. Uh, he, he's going to be uh, the cam as well. So, um, so Pauli, Paulino. Where is his silver card? Silver left wing. There we go. So, let's get his reward card. A big upgrade. 10 pace, 10 shooting, 10 passing, 10 physical, 8 dribbling, and 4 defending. Um, if we give him a sniper chem style, it becomes an 85 cam. What's the best thing for me to get him to a cam? A dead eye makes him an 86 or an 84 cam. Artist makes him an 86 cam with great ball control and dribbling and much better part. His passing is terrible for a cam, to be fair. His passing is truly terrible. And, and you know what? I'm, I'm going to give him a sniper anyway. Oh, Marksman. What does Marksman do for him? Is Marksman good for him? Really nice boost in reactions and such. Good boost in strength and physicals. Good boost in shooting. Let's give him a marksman. I'm, I'm happy with that. And we'll give him the left wing to get him up to 10 chem as well. Left wing to left mid. Happy days on that one. Um, but th this, this is a risk. And we are going to be going into the 4 one 2 one 2 formation. The new formation, as I said to you guys, I'd show you. So this is what we're lining up like right now. So we're switching into 4 one 2 balance. Uh, whoops. Um, and then for my actual s setup, uh, we need to change this around. So Aubameyang and Makalele need to swap. And then that is what the team's going to look like. So Mbappe and Mbappeyang up front. Paulinho in at Cam. De Bruyne and Pogba at centre mid. Makalele at CDM. Lala, Varane, Ferdinand and Wendell on the, on the back line. As I said, what we can do is we can play Paulinho on 8 Cam and put in, you know, Robertson at left back and play him off Cam as well. And in fact, I do want to get a full back. Uh, I do want to go and get Robertson actually. Um, for the left back role just in case like if I'm just not enjoying Wendell if he's letting me down a lot I want to bring Robertson in I could use Chilwell and get him on 10 chem with the link to Ferdinand uh, but the problem with that would be um, obviously that then Paulinho would again lose lose chem points so this is the squad that we're going to be playing our final five games in guys I'm hoping that we can win three out of two just for my ego, essentially, just to know that I'm still good enough to get elite. But we're taking a big risk with some of the players that we're playing. We've got a small red gold players pack from the Bundesliga SBC uh, for Sancho. We don't get a board. Um, we get an Italian player there. So that was a bit of a waste right there. But um, we get... Oh, Bernadeschi actually might be all right. No, he's under 2K right now. Um, and ooh, Brazilian might be all right. Yeah, he's, he's a little more than normal just because people will be using him for the SBC. And Sabitza will try and list up and sell on as well. Uh, the other two guys can go in the bin. So that is going to be that, guys. We're now going to get into those final five games, see where it takes us. And hey, if I do go two wins and three losses or one win and four losses or zero wins and five losses, so be it. You know, if we finish on 20, we finish on 20. It's not going to be the end of the world. Let's get in to the action okay guys so into the final five games we go of course you guys know already that i did indeed get to 
um, Elite 2, uh, which I was very happy with, if I'm being perfectly honest. You know, I started the weekend really bad. Um, I was actually 8-3 and three at one stage. Um, I then got to 11-4. and four, And, you know, in my mind, I was like, it doesn't really matter that I'm taking these silly losses because... I'm only looking to get to goal three. I then got to 15 and five, played up to 16 wins, one before goal two. And then it just, just all fell, fell in good for me from there onwards, bros. You know, won 10 out of 10 from the last 10 games. Got to 25 and five for the second weekend in a row. And just generally quite delighted. Into the comments, dudes. Um, Laska says, was there anyone else who really appreciated the extension of the weekend league? Me. Because if it wasn't for the extension of the weekend league, I would have finished goal three, 100%. Uh, James Craig says, hey, Nap, just going to ask for fat swap deals. Do you think Pedro is a better option over 100k pack, excluding everything else in swap deals? I mean, it really just matters to you, dude. If, if you've already got like a couple of good right wings, a load of red cards, other SBC cards, and then Pedro is probably not for you, take the 100k pack. Ultimately, what I'll say is this, is within a week or two of you getting Pedro or getting the 100k pack, whichever thing you took will seem like the wrong thing. You'll get Pedro and you won't, you'll play 10 games with him and then you won't use him again because you pack a sick red card or EA release a, you know, Futmus SBC right wing Shakiri that's better than Pedro, something like that, you know? Alternatively, you'll take the 100k pack, you'll pack nothing out of it and you'll be like, damn, I wish I got Pedro or you'll pack something sick out of it and you'll sell it. And then you'll waste those coins on another SBC and you'll be like, damn, I wish I got Pedro. Ultimately, I, th I think this, and this is a beautiful thing that EA do that keeps everyone constantly spending real money on this game, is that anything you do now is relatively inconsequential to what will happen in a week or two weeks or three weeks time. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, my, if, you know... What would I choose? If, if you need a good Premier League right wing, take Pedro. If you don't, take the 100k pack. Alfie says, Hey, Nep, do you know if you save your Red Foot Champs cards for next week, will it be a different team of the week? Love you, Vids. Keep it up. It will not be a different team of the week. They are locked to the current team of the week. Vigar says, Hey, Nep, love your vids and the series. I was thinking you could try your best during the week. You could uh, try fun teams during, I think it means during the weekend league. You could try fun teams in Div Rivals. Anyways, I will watch anything on the road to glory and anything you will upload. Well, I appreciate the kind words, dude. The, the, you know, we, we, we've been through it already a lot. Um, but the main reason why I won't play Fat Rivals to rank one is just because it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. Not in any way. You know, I'm going to be able to finish in rank three, division two, with minimal effort and get four 50k packs and two mega packs. And it's going to be great for the series. And although the short-term gain would be, um, you know, that I'm end, I end up playing with fun squads and stuff. In this series, I can't even do that because I don't have the players available to use because we're on the first owner road to glory. And on that same kind of note, um, Adam Champion says, Hey, Nep, you said that you think it's unreasonable that Division 5 Rank 1 rewards are the same as Division 1 Rank 3 rewards. Although I see how you could see this as a good player, I'm not a great player and I'm still in Division 5 and I think I should be able to earn pretty good rewards if I play enough to get twenty to 25,000 points in Rivals especially as many people in the lower divisions do not have access to other reward avenues such as foot champs and find squad battles, I guess, boring. Anyways, love the vids. I mean, just a few things. Finding squad battles boring doesn't mean that you should be entitled to more rewards in foot rivals, right? That, that is not the way it works. If you're in Division 5 and you're struggling to get in foot champs and you're earning twenty to 25,000 points in rivals, you, again, you, you, it's a little bit backwards. You can't say on the one hand you play enough to get twenty to 25,000 points, but you can't qualify for foot champs. That's just wrong again. You will qualify in that amount of games. However, and, and this seems to be a point that I'm having to repeat a considerable number of times because people just don't seem to be actually hearing what I'm saying. I do not want Division 5 rewards to change. I want Division 1 rewards to change and Division 2 rewards to change. And I want them to fix the fact that Division 3 rank 1 tradable is not doubled as untradable. In tradable, you get rare mega packs. As untradable, you only get mega packs. In every other division, the, tradable, the untradable rewards are exactly double of the tradable rewards, except there. I want them to scale the rewards upwards. I don't want Division 5 guys to just get a 15k pack and a pat on the back. Congratulations to you. I want Division 1 rank 3 to be considerably better than Division 5 rank 1 without changing Division 5 rank 1. You know, I, I don't know what... I, I don't want people in the lower divisions to get screwed out. I just want the rewards to represent the level of skill and level of difficulty it's re it, that's required to achieve the ranks that are available. That, that's, that's what I'm aiming for. That's what I'm angling for. 
Connor says, and this is again going in the same line of fight rivals. Hey, Nep, I love you, but it's time for some tough love. I'm interested. I'm intrigued. Uh, I think screw the rewards of you want to get better and go into Division 1 and you play as hard as and the best you can because you already have a better squad than most of you can dream. And while I completely understand what you're saying, you're a content creator and you have a very lucky job, so you should not care about the rewards. And just go and become better because that's what I believe is best for all viewers and for you. So I think you should take what you can from this comment and leave a like if you liked it. I just want you to get better and play hard players and don't care about the rewards. I mean, that was hard to read because there was absolutely no punctuation, but I get what you're saying. It's it's you, like you're just you're just wrong in so many aspects, and and I you know you are right in very like many areas as well. I am a content creator, so to say the rewards don't matter is is just wrong because the rewards are very important. You know the reward videos are big videos on my channels, and the better the rewards are, the better that I do. And again, in rivals, the sad truth is that division two rank three is better than rank two and rank one in division two. And then anything in rank, anything in Division One except for Division One rank one. Now, although you say I have a team that is better than most, and that is again correct, not in Division One. In Division One, it is literally pros and top 100 players that are in there. So if I push up to Division One and just don't care about the rewards, I am not going to have fun there because my team isn't good enough to compete with Vieiras and Cruyffs and Eusebios and Hullets and Ronaldos and Prime R Nines and George Bests and Neymars every single game. I can do it on a game here or there because in Division 2 right now, you know, I'm coming up against some teams that are good, some teams that are average, some good players, some average players, and I'm generally doing good in Division 2. But the long term of the series would be would be hampered a lot if i just started playing and not caring about the rewards i would it it, it would take the pro, the progress of the series would would stutter it would take me far longer to achieve better players and better squads because the rewards would be better because i'd be losing more and that is not something that is a positive right now in terms of content creation in terms of the series and in terms of just generally speaking Division 2 rank 3 for me is the best rank and result that I can get every week. And it's just very easy to achieve because of the foot champ stuff. Now, to say that in terms of improving, I think uh, the fact that I've got 25 and 5 back-to-back -back weeks. And in both of those weeks, I've taken losses to a couple of you know bad players where I just lost my focus and, and didn't really perform very well. I'm actually very close to being 27 plus wins a week. You know, I just need to really sort out this lack of consistency in, in a few games. I'm trying a few new things with uh, tactics and stuff like that. And with the new patch coming next week, where it impacts manual defending and auto blocks from defenders, I, I actually, I feel like I'm going to become the best I've been at FIFA forever. So playing up into Division 1 isn't going to make me that much better to the point where it's going to improve my game to get more wins, you know? Um, so I, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Uh, the l last two comments, I will read them as well. But as you can see, guys, we did finish 25 and five. Uh, JHJ says, Nep, do you think EA could add a Champions League mode similar to World Cup mode? I would have loved something like that. We talked about it before, but even just a Champions League mode would have been great. A mode where like the World Cup, you go into the Champions League tournament phase, you play six games in there. If you go first or second, you get a good reward and advance. If you come third or fourth, you get like a small reward and then you have to restart. Once you get to the knockout stages, you play it like a tournament and the further you get, the better rewards you get. That would be amazing. And then with that mode, they can make team restrictions. That would be amazing. That would be genuinely amazing. I would love to have seen something like that and I'm gutted that they didn't do it. And last but not least, Eric Langemir says, what if everything in the gameplay was manual, like passing, shooting, etc. If everything in the game was manual, my man, um, nobody would play the game or very, very few people would play the game because it would be too hard for casuals to play. So they would stop playing it entirely and then the player base would fall off the face of the earth. Revenue would stop coming and EA wouldn't be able to make the game because they wouldn't earn enough revenue. Having it on assisted for the general user base, which is like 96, 97% plus of the people that play this game is paramount. Just like in any video game, you know, most video games are incredibly heavily assisted in one way or another there's very few games that are not assisted and in those games uh they have smaller pl player bases you know but anyway guys this is going to be the end of the video for today if you did enjoy this be sure to leave a like rating comment and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already but for now guys i'm out
Peace.